Yeah, I'm Pat Ash. <laughs> that's, that's my brand. Uh, I work at a company called Hollow Ponds. There's a logo for that. Uh, I didn't bother making slides. I did, but I didn't finish them. Uh, I also do stuff with Wild Rumpus. And I do weird stuff with video games and theatre in London. But, like, no one comes to that it's weird. Uh, but, Can you uh, get yeah. up even more right Sorry, now, right? sorry. Okay. I'll do, hang on. Going off the stand. Got terrible mic technique anyway, sorry. Uh, yeah, 2-1 in drama. Uh, so yeah, I work at Hollow Ponds. Uh, before that, I used to work at a company called Homes. I was like, oh, sorry, I'm going to be talking about Loot Rascals. This is going to be very rambling. Uh, I'm really bad at talks. And I didn't realize I was doing one until I looked at the Fantastic Arcade schedule on Monday. So, you know, it's going to be good. Uh, but yeah, we're making a game called uh, Loot Rascals. Woo. And uh, I guess I wanted to talk about kind of like collaboration, I guess, and stuff like that, because Hollow Ponds and Honey Slug for me are kind of all about like collaboration and not just working with like normal people that already make video games and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I was, I was going to give a kind of brief overview. Uh, so like uh, Honey Slug, uh, most famous for this game, if you've played it. Oh, hang on. called Ho Ho Come. Some people said nice things about it. Didn't win anyway. So, like, yeah, as it says at the end there, uh, Hohokam was like a collaboration between Honey Slug and a whole mess of people. So we worked with Sony Santa Monica, uh, the artist Richard Hogg, who Evan is very keen on, apparently, and uh, Go Ghostly International, uh, who uh, provided loads of their back catalogue and a bunch of original songs from people like Mishna and Shigeto and... Uh, other awesome people on Ghost that I can't remember. But like, yeah, like, it was much more than the like, six people sat in the Honey Slug office. Uh, <clears throat> and like, Dick is like a gallery, well, not, he trained as like a proper artist and he does all proper art and drawing and stuff, doesn't make video games for like his career. Uh, and so like, that kind of collaborative spirit of bringing people in is something that like, nearly every Honey Slug game is involved in. So, like, this is another one we made called Frobisher Says, which had about, like, E3. 20, 30 artists or something work on it. Frobisher Says, oh, and have Kevin Elder my in pudding. Frobisher Says, fight this bear. Frobisher says, make a terrible din. Frobisher says, 
please say my name. Frobisher. 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 Yeah, that's Frobisher. Uh, yeah, that kind of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my pretty good. Hang on. Oh, that's a bit. So good. Uh, so yeah, and that like last year, Honey Slug kind of went for a nap because uh, they've been running it for a long time, and so uh, Ricky uh, started a new company called Hollow Ponds, and we started making a game called Loot Rascals, and we were like, who do we want to work with? And then we decided to work with all these people, who were all really good. I'm going to kind of talk about some of them. So, like, uh, Loot Rascal, I'm pretty sure a screenshot. Hang on. Loot Rascals looks like that. Uh, it's kind of very silly. Uh, everything's kind of got these antennae because it's set in space. <laughs> you know, everything needs antennae. Uh, yeah. And so, like, Davey Swapaz is the kind of main animator and illustrator on it, and uh, he's amazing. And you should come later on because we're going to be watching a bunch of his like very silly cartoons. He once did an Adventure Time episode as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to show you a video of his, which kind of captures him. It probably, Brandon might have been planning to show this one, but I'm going to show it anyway because it's brilliant. Uh, but yeah, it kind of captures his vibe. I don't have any internet. I don't think it is hate. I think it's yeah, 360 is the best you can do. Oh anyway. yes. Oh. I've just remembered what's for dinner tonight, guys. Fish fingers! <laughs> Here, come back, you! See when you kicked that stone against my house? I got a wee fright and dropped a plate. Sorry, it was an accident. And you've marked my wall. So not only is my good plate in pieces, I'm going to have to come out and scrub that. Oh, sorry. I said sorry. You watch your tone, son. I'm the victim here. I'll get a grip, victim. Here, come back, you. I'm not finished telling you off. Right, well, that's fine. I'll just be phoning that robot who looks after you. He doesn't look after me. I'm 26 years old. God's sake, stupid cow. Oh, hello, Terry. What can I do for you? Uh, hi. Uh, I just thought you'd like to know that Mrs. Granger um, from the house with the green roof, well, she's been going around saying to everyone that you're an absolute idiot and that no one should speak to you or be friends with you. And um, also, she hates your big stupid trainers. Oh, does she now? Uh, uh huh. So if I were you, I don't know, um, I'd probably want to kick her house over or stamp on it or something. Hmm. Are you sure you have not just made all that up, Terry, trying to cause mischief? Maybe I should have a wee word with that robot who looks after you. I'll just forget it then! God's sake, try to do you a favour. <laughs> okay, that's him just coming in the front door now, so I'll have a word with him. Okay, no problem, bye. Terry, that was Mrs. Green. Just shut up and make my fish fingers, eh? Yeah, so that's Terry Runders kicks a stone. Uh, and yeah, so he makes very, very silly things. And like when we were coming up with the like visual style, uh, him and Ricky just dumped like a whole bunch of just nonsense space stuff in the 50s and 60s in a big like Dropbox folder. And then Dave just was like, "Cool, I'll just draw a load of like space ogres and weird." Thieves and ice cream men because the game's set on a holiday camp as well, which is why there's an ice cream man because uh, you have ice cream, don't you? Uh, so yeah, and then there's people we're working with people like uh Brent Kobayashi, who's Meowza, who does like a load of cool stuff for Spry Fox and his own work and did all the art for Glitch and is amazing. And he's doing all the kind of environment art, and then you know, there's Grandmaster Gareth is doing all the music from Misty's Big Adventure. He also makes very stupid. As music. the sun rose, a fearful sight greeted them. 
Destruction, 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 destruction. Each time victory seemed within his grasp, something went wrong, something went wrong, something went wrong, something went wrong. Can't your faithful computer help? No, it can't. No, it can't. Now, he cried, is your moment of glory. Charge! 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 Picked that at random. I had no idea what it was going to be like. <laughs> uh, we're working with uh, Jonathan Whiting, who worked on Sports Friends, and like, because the game's a roguelike game, uh, that's why it's got like a grid, <laughs> and it's got fighting, and you die, like in a roguelike. Uh, and Jonathan makes loads of really good like roguelikes, and is proper into them, and like. I, can, I like Splunky, but I don't get roguelikes most of the time. So yeah, see, so classes. This is a great game. Oh god, what am I doing? <laughs> I am left, forward. Right. Cool. So yeah, this is a roguelike. It's good. You should play it. It's called Garbage In, Garbage Out. Uh, working with sound guys, Max, who worked on Ho Hokum, and said, oh, I should say, yeah, uh, Davey did a bunch of art for Frobisher, and he also did a bunch of art for this game that we made. Peggy 7. Which is about a zoo full of explosive animals blowing up to kill aliens. So Dave did, like, Dave did all the kind of, like, stupid decals and stuff in the game. There's an amazing, I don't think it's in the trailer, but there's this amazing Hurt Locker Gorilla that you can find in the game, which is the best thing in the game. That last shot's not even actually in the game, we faked that. So yeah, uh, and we, so we've worked with Dave quite a bit, and we were like, Dave's cool, we should get him to do some art, and he did. Uh, that's me. Woo. Hi there. And then we're also John Bowen, who you might know, who's amazing, because everyone's amazing on this team. He's uh, doing a bunch of art. He does all these amazing, like, pencil sketches, and, like, this really just beautiful style. Uh, he's done a bunch of character design in the game. And he also worked on Frobisher, because like everyone worked on Frobisher. <laughs> There's like 30 artists. Uh, and then Mackie, who's an animator who uh, worked on Her Hokum as well, worked on Frobisher, did a bunch of animation. She also animated the Top Cat advert in the UK that made Ricky famous on Twitter for like a week because of his great tweet about Top Cat. Check it out if you get a chance. It's really good. But yeah, Mackie is an amazing animator. She does a lot of kind of for hire stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, she's just brilliant. She also, oh yeah, cool. She also animated these idiots in her hokum. They're the, like, my, one of my favorite characters in the game. Like these stupid alligator scientists. You know? Uh, and that's uh, Nikki who does all the kind of accounting. But yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> I, I could show you like some spreadsheets to demonstrate that. Nikki's awesome. She, you know, she bat. Oh yeah, she also does a lot of amazing cooking. But yeah, that's kind of like everyone. 
who is working on Loot Rascals, and like we've done a lot with a bunch of people over a lot of years, building like uh, there it is, building like the game and relationships with those people, and allowing them to kind of do what they want. And it's been really good, I guess. And it's, I guess, no, it has been really good, and it's made like a really what I think is great game. Uh, I show, I can show you it. Hopefully it won't crash. If you've played the build here, if you get to World 3, you'll probably crash the game. <laughs> as Timon has found out quite a lot. But yeah, this is the cool loading bit. Just, I'm not sure how it will run on this laptop. This laptop's not good. But it should run fine. It's just 2D. <laughs> Give it a sec. Show you some more. Let's, let's look at the pictures again. Quite loads. You'll see this in a minute. Oh, there we go. No. So imagine this, but it's like moving. Oh. Yeah, it's still loading. Probably should have loaded it in the background, but I'm not professional. There we go. Hey. So, this is Loot Rascals. This is the menu. It's great. Uh, I'll, hang on, I'll clear the save so you can watch the intro movie. No, no tutorial. Wake up. Wake up. Tony, wake up. All right, we're nearly there, so I'm just going to talk you through the mission again, OK? Right, you're on your way to the site of a new outer space holiday camp where the medical substance, liquid anything, has already been transported in a Big Barry unit, which is a nickname, it's got a technical name. The Big Barry should have by now prepared the planet's surface, poured in the liquid anything, and initiated the 3D rendering process. However, we've lost contact. The most likely scenario is that flying space debris is snapped off the Big Barry's aerial, in which case you should load the appropriate chip into your chest mode to chip leader and use your helmet to render a replacement part. Before returning home, you should inspect the camp in case there's anything else we need to repair or replace. And remember, ensure that an area is clear before rendering in case you accidentally hit someone in the face, which can kill. This concludes the mission rem Oh, sorry, clearly put you back to hypersleep there. <laughs> oh, here's the planet coming into view now, look. So, I'll guide the spaceship down to the surface and you just... Kill, kill, kill. I don't know what's just happened, but I do know that moon's not supposed to be there. Uh, and the bad news is I've lost control of the ship. Oh, there's the big Barry, but um, his head's been stolen. Right, um, we're, we're definitely going to kill. Oh, hello. Look at this bunch of rascals. Okay, well, the new mission is, let's escape. <laughs> Probably need to put this back in now. Ooh. Hey, so this is the game. That's pretty close. There we go. It's like I'm a professional radio DJ. So, you know, it's a roguelike. That's just some text. You walk around, you reveal tiles, you fight rats, you fight ogres. It's a roguelike. Uh, also, like a card game. Wow. Uh, it's basically like your stats are managed by this de hand of cards that you find, or loot chips, to use the correct term, uh, by killing enemies and exploring. Uh, all the combat's like automatic. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> it's a roguelike card. I didn't steal anything because I was rubbish. Ah, uh, uh, the audio doesn't work on this video. Oh no, it does. 
So this is where you meet the big evil enemy. Look, Barry, it's one of your little friends. Barry's been telling me all about this fascinating liquid he brought with him. You see, my influence over your dimension is limited, so I need my representatives on the ground. I don't quite have a hang of it yet, but I'm guessing you're close. In the meantime, we'd really appreciate it. If you keep the numbers down up there, we can't have those idiots hurting Barry. And don't worry about dying. It's a simple matter of reshuffling time. Now, back you go. Barry has so much to teach me. Your planet's so lovely, Barry. You must show me together. Right, well, I think you were a dead body for most of that, so I'll give you the upshot. Um, there's a there's a thing below or somewhere, and it's going to keep bringing us back to life as long as we kill the aliens around here. But what I'm thinking is, we find the big Barry head and fly it home ourselves without that thing below, obviously. So let's get looking. Hey, and then he respawn. He got like a honey deck. Can you find some more ogres? Rogue light. Hmm. Uh, I guess while I'm vaguely playing, as good as I'm any of anyone's got any questions or anything. I'll just comment if anything exciting comes. Oh, well, this is a ghost. It can walk through walls. But, uh, I'll kill. Oh, it's gonna kill me, I bet. No, she goes. Does anyone have any questions for her? So that gives you a special card that you can use to make a weird dummy that all the enemies hate and will go and fight. Oh. Ah, is it cracked? Should you uh, lower the PC audio just a little bit? Yeah, sorry. There we go. Don't have to be that much, but uh, there you go. I'm oh, dead. I'm much better at this game than it seems on it. So uh, when you die, enemies will steal cards off you, and then those uh, are uploaded to the server. You have a server, uh, and your card will appear in other players' games as that enemy. Hang on, let me see if I've got the cheats on. No, I don't have cheats on. Uh, so, like, your card will appear in other players' games, and uh, they'll get the choice whether or not to send it back to you or not. And if they do, they get. If they don't send it back, then they get to keep it and use it. But a holographic version of you will appear in their game and kick their ass uh, and steal steal your card back off them. But if you if they help if they send it back to you, then you. Your hologram will turn up in their game and be nice to them and run around with them and help kill things. Uh, but you don't get to keep the cool card then, so sometimes you know, it might be worth beating up another player even after you've stolen their card. Uh, oh, I'm dead. Oh no. Should be fine. There's also these like unique cards that do stuff. Oh, that's useless at the moment. The best unique card is one that just makes the game real time. So it's turn based. And everyone who uses it dies instantly. It's amazing. Because you're like, it basically makes you real time and all the enemies kind of move on a timer. And everyone just goes, oh yeah, I can use that to like weave through these enemies. And they always die. And it's just too funny not to leave in the game. Bolus. 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 They use boluses if you didn't notice. What happens when you sweat that much Bolus. inside of a sealed Bolus. space suit? Uh, the player gets, character is constantly sweating. It gets very smelly, I imagine. He probably, he probably has a terrible space rash. Oh, that's me dead. 
nothing worth stealing. Well, I mean, you don't have to play as him. He's really, he's like a big loser, but you can play as the cool female character. So yeah, he's very sweaty. But she's like awesome and doesn't sweat. <laughs> Space heroines don't sweat. Yeah, and she, she's really excited to be killing a bunch of ogres, whereas he's just like, I want to go home. <laughs> Is that going to work? Or is that going to crash? No, it's just slowed. These are all the enemies in the game. Can't see them because I haven't fought them yet. But this, I should have put... Hang on. I'm going to do something inadvisable and quit the game. Uh, loot Rascal's current build. Assets. XML. Game set and local. What is global? I don't know, that's some programming thing. I, I don't do programming, I'm just a producer. I mean, this is programming. It's well legit. Uh, so let's load the game back up. Hopefully I can remember the keys for cheating and I can show you a bunch of the stupid enemies Dave drew. Oh, actually, I might be able to just find them in Dropbox. Uh, Lou Rascals. Enemies. So yeah, these are all the enemies in the game. Uh, concepts. Oh, these are amazing, some of these. If, if they're there. Ah, oh, no. No, they're not in there. Sorry. What inspired you guys to make this? Uh, so like, after we finished uh, Super Train Zoo, which is the last Honey Slug game, we Dave came down because we were like we want to work with Dave. And he came down and we sat around and we were just like, what kind of game do you want to make? And we spent ages kind of talking about stuff and being like, uh, you know, oh, hang on, no, Mooney. Oh no, these are old. Uh, and talking about and we were like, it's like stuff like uh, well, there's a whole bunch of weird stuff like Gregory Horror Show and uh, Pikmin and stuff with influences to a degree of like. The idea of like a world that's populated by people who would just kind of get on with their stuff if you, if you weren't there. Well, these are some digital biscuits. Uh, so yeah, and it was kind of that, and then talking through... I don't know, I can't really remember. It was like two years ago we started coming up with it. But yeah, it was just like the idea of a stupid holiday park full of idiots that you could beat up. It was funny. Oh, this is an old enemy that's not in the game anymore. It's a flat turd. It's horrible. These guys are good. These are like big, weird wrestlers. They, they, they sleep until you fight near them, and then they wake up and kick your ass. Oh, this is good as well. This is... By day, this is uh, a girl in a monster costume, and then at night, it becomes a real monster. Well, the best enemy in the game. Well, everyone always seems to disagree with me on this. They don't seem to get why this is so good. It's the Horse Brothers. They're amazing. It's a horse and a seahorse, and they're brothers, and they're helping each other. It's just like, it's the greatest character design of all time. That's a fact. Whose was that, or was that a, a team effort? That was pretty much every character idea is from Dave. He just, I, don't, I can't see where Wiley is. It's just where am no I? One. I'm well, everywhere. There. It, yeah, it's kind of a, sorry, God, a Wiley. Uh, yeah, Dave just comes up with just the weirdest ideas for enemies. So we were like, oh, it'd be cool if there was an enemy which, like, when it attacks you, knocks a bunch of cards out of your deck. And he was like, well, what if it was a carrot that can burrow underground that's shaped like a boxing glove? And then he sent us that. And it was just like, okay, that's in the game. And it's like, there's some really horrible enemies. Like, the bombs are, like, these horrible, like, bags of beaks that like and there's like a mobile version which can chase you 
they, they like when they get activated. Let's see if I can find the animation. Um, triggered. They like squawk and go all these horrible colours. It's just like and they make really horrible noises. Oh, where's the scuzzy port witch? That's a good one. So this was inspired by you know the the woman who gets turned into a robot in Superman yes. Three, is it? The best Superman movie. Yeah, it's the scuzzy port witch. They teleport around and they've got electric attacks. Uh, I had nightmares about that for years when I was a kid. That's terrifying. You know what he's talking about? <laughs> I would look it up on the internet, but I've not got any Wi-Fi, so you'll just have to imagine a Superman woman Three being with turned Richard into Pryor. a robot. Netflix it. It's a winner. Uh, I'm trying to remember what else there is. I'm just poking around the Dropbox now. Oh, I found a really weird old prototype. I'll show you that. This was like, I think, the thing Ricky made to like test the game. Because we like did a bunch of paper prototyping and like board game version of it. And then we made this. No, not that. I don't want that. Go away, preload it out. I want that. Run that back. So yeah, this is like... It's all mouse controlled as well, and it's really weird and like hard. But it's got all like, these, like I loved this character, this robot design. Oh yeah, all the cards as well have like bonuses for like if you put them in the right slot or like they affect cards. But yeah, this original robot design where it's got like glasses, is so good. I'm really good. We lost that. But yeah, and they had like a weird score mechanic as well of like trying to find liquid anything. Because oh yeah, in the in the game, like you have this stuff called liquid anything that can be ma makes anything, and it's a liquid. Uh, and that was your score, and if you, you had to try and get as much of that as possible, but that's not really in the game anymore. Oh, I can go here. Look, I'll kill him first, and then I can explore this place if I step onto it. Oh, God's sake! Oh, he's gonna kill me. <laughs> Good sound effects. Oh, and then, yeah, there's like a night day mechanic. Oh, I shouldn't have, like, done that. But, yeah, oh, I can't explore that. But, yeah. Oh, God, it's really slow and tiresome, this prototype. But slick. It's got that honey, it's got that hollow pond slickness. Uh, so that's radioactive, but that doesn't mean anything. It's all about the juice. They don't call us hollow ponds, no, hollow juice ponds for nothing was what I meant to say. Oh, you can go down here and I'll get killed. There should be some flap turds down there, I think. Okay, enter. Did you make flap turds based off of a fluffy bird? No, like all the things are just what Dave called them. So he was like, yeah, these are flap turds. <laughs> And that, that's a Zombo, that's a Centrax, it's gonna kill me. So I died. It's really hard, this prototype. Uh, that's, that's enough of looking at it. Uh, anything else? I don't know. As I say, I'm kind of not that prepared. <laughs> and it's not as just fun to watch me play a, lo a roguelike I'm not very good at at the moment, compared to David <laughs> watching and playing everything. So, uh, something I was curious about earlier, you mentioned uh, that you guys pulled like, various um, visual artists with different distinctive styles into this project. Yes. I, I guess, like, um, so it's interesting. That, that, that kind of, it's, it's like the, the game has a visual identity, right? And yep. when you get, um, and, and I often see projects where, like, one visual artist with a distinctive style is brought in to kind of like be the art director and then the game is made in like a style defined by that person and they're yep. like peculiarities. But it sounds like your process with this game is you you had SWAT paths and you had you had these two these two other visualists. Uh and I, I guess I'm just curious how you what what the sort of process of bringing uh, them all together on a look was like. Yeah, so there's a lot of back and forth like uh like so, John uh, John Bohm did the art, des uh, character design and stuff for the thing below because he has that really amazing, like creepy style with all these kind of weird tentacles a lot of the time. Uh, so he did that, and then uh, and Brent does all the 
kind of world art and there's a lot of uh, kind of back and forth where one person will draw something and then the other person will kind of iterate on it and draw it again and like go back and forth until kind of everyone's happy with it so like uh, what's an example of that so yeah like this machine used to look like when it was first drawn didn't look anything like that it looked more like it was like a worse version of the one in this screenshot that's now not in the game too this and it was like we just gave it, Dave drew that originally and then we gave it to Brent and Brent drew it like this and then Dave changed some stuff and yeah it's, it's like a lot of like uh, back and forth basically between people and kind of but yeah in general like their art styles just really seem to gel like as soon as we put all the kind of tiles in that Brent gave us it just worked perfectly it's pretty incredible <coughs> also got some really nice kind of paper textures that sort of unify everything. Yeah. Oh. yeah it's a, it's a lot with like playing around with the colors and stuff so that everything can gel. But that's, again, like that's all those guys. I, I don't really know about colors. Uh, God. Space overs. Just won't give a gal a break. Uh, anyone else got any other questions? Yeah. If not, I can just kind of either keep playing or I can let you all go to, like, have a wee. Okay, just go for it. See if I can get to World 2. Bad calm. Oh, so, uh, we're doing a kind of... I don't want to say early access, because it's not early access. Uh, but we're doing like a kind of basically ripping off Overland and doing like a itch.io small scale release like in a month or so. And then, oh look, there's Vile Roberto. Uh, and then like full release will be kind of February, March time. I imagine if all goes well, hopefully it will. That's my job to make sure it all goes well. Uh, it's fine, I can deal with this. Okay, that's kind of when I die, I'm just gonna gurgle my own name. <laughs> Wiley, Wiley, Wiley. Oh, there's monstrous Jamie. Let's try and kill him. Is it you or is it Evan again? Evan, you've got asking too many questions. Uh, important question. When you defeat the Horse Brothers and they like fall over dead, is one of them still alive? No, they have a very close relationship. The other one dies of grief. It's just like dead ringers. Ah, there we go. We're gonna kill monstrous Jamie. So, this is this isn't a real person. I made this name up because uh, this is faked, it's not online right now. Uh, but let's let's keep it and get into a fight. So I also get a sweet card. And also, if I use that, when I... Oh, I need to fight people now. Oh, it's really, really slow. Should go play it on the actual PCs out there because it doesn't run as bad as it does on this laptop. Also, I think my laptop's overheating, which is fun. We'll just keep playing until my laptop crashes. Ooh, look at that horrible line. Oh yeah, I can use the bomb ability now. So now I can place bombs in the world and 
Yeah, the horrible. Ah. Oh, this is really right. It's like. Uh, how am I doing? Where's the map? Ah. Oh, everywhere has a name in the game. So, like, these were the enchanting moors of Zax. And we're currently in the modest clearing of wonder. This is a lovely place to spend a vacation. Are those generated names? They are. They are all. Oh, oh no. Almost swore as well. All ages stream, sorry. Yeah, it was my job to sit and come up with lots of different names for, like, wonder and amazement. It's been a good day on Thesaurus.com. Also, coming up with alien names is the hardest thing. Most of the alien names are just things in that you would see in an office with like a couple of letters taken out half the time. So it's like, I think one of them is literally just the name of like a laptop manufacturer. So it's just like, ah, that works. Change it one letter, they won't see. Avatar. Hey! So yeah, every world has a teleporter in it that takes you to the next level. Because this is a roguelike. So we're going into the flamboyant glades of atrocity. Is that a frame rate? No, no. Come on. There we go. Yeah, everyone, everything's harder now. Nice. Slide about. Oh, these guys have amazing sound effects. Oh, shit. Yeah, fight with one of them. No, would probably kill me. That's a night wizard. He makes everything night, as you might expect. This is a day night cycle as well in the game, and everything attacks or defends depending on. What time of day is that? Let's heal. So the whole kind of like uh, automatic combat and kind of free movement, even though it's on a grid. Uh, I'm just going to probably badly misquote Ricky here and say something which isn't true. Uh, I seem to remember he said it came a lot from like. Uh, playing Diablo 3, where he just got like really good at Diablo 3 and could just like run around not really having to think about combat and he just found that really kind of satisfying me able to just zone out and run around and so like well that's a flat fella. He has a horrible death and egg comes out. Uh, like, yeah Diablo 3. This game's like Diablo 3. Oh here's the guy I stole from earlier. He's gonna beat me up. Oh, he's gonna crash the game. Oh no, that's my lap. Oh yeah, it did. Woo! It's a very stable PC game. Oh, <laughs> uh, now Windows is locked up. Man, you keep the crap out of you. There we go. Oh wait, no, what's going on? Why am I in the dome? Live bug checking at Fantastic Arcade. Does anyone got any questions about bugs in the game? Any questions about bugs? What's your favorite bug? Ooh. I don't know. I'll, hang on, I'll put this up while we just chat. And you can just ask me questions. Uh, so, I don't know. Probably like something involving like flying, I imagine. Like daddy long legs are pretty weird. I like those. I don't know. What, what, what good bugs do you get in Austin that you don't get in the UK, US that I should check out? Uh, While I'm here, <laughs> we we do have daddy long legs. Yeah, but like, there's only like Austin bugs. Do you have ant lions? No, what's an ant lion? Those are kind of weird. They're Ooh. little things that dig around in the dirt and create a little pit, and then ants fall in and eat them. Why is it a lion? They, they don't. I thought that. I'm pretty sure I fought those in Final Fantasy ant lions. Yeah. What's a tarantula hawk? Uh, oh, sweet. <laughs> Yeah. A 
American bugs have we messed up. We bought a big, hefty sack of them for you as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> Every speaker gets one to take home. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Uh, that's fine. The I mean, if they do it under the bed, that's where Ed's sleeping. I'm on the air bed. The <laughs> uh, most horrific bug is the potato bug. And those are in California. Uh, Google I'll it. I'll check you those out next GDC. A, I'll yeah. check out some potato bugs. Uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty much showing everything I was going to show. <laughs> you can just keep chatting bugs if you want. Oh, yeah, she come back at midnight. Brandon told me to tell you all this, so I'm telling you all this. To watch Slap Pass cartoons. I told you already, but you should come watch Slap Pass cartoons because he is good. <laughs>